I want to welcome everybody to the Massive Masters Wednesday case study. Oh. Let me take it from here, Trevor. Yep, you got it. Thank cool. you. Awesome. So I wanted to update this slide, which I did, then I uh, made a mistake on the flow. But on the bottom side, uh, what we talk about is that, so the topic for today is capital raising and how that impacts uh, the project or vice versa and how the capital raising evolved uh, over time, especially how, you know, it, it changes when the market upside or downside happened. So we'll try to talk about that capital raising. And also we'll talk about a little bit more this time because most of the time when we talk about capital raising, it seems to be uh, engagement with investors up until the deal closing. But there's a full cycle post deal closing for the next five years that we have to manage. So I will try to give you guys uh, some snapshot of what happens from our perspective. That could be an example of as you know, you should expect from the GP side, uh, if someone is above hundred million dollars or you know, something like that, or they're growing. And also if you're a GP, you're trying to establish an organization where you have 100, 150, 200 million dollars of the assets, what could be an example look like? So I'll try to give you both sides of it, uh, how we take a look at it and how we are learning from the other uh, sophisticated organizations as well. So on the bottom, uh, this is our deal flow. Q3 picked up a little bit, but Q2 was really busy. We looked at lots of assets, a little over 300. Q3, we're wrapping up around 200. We're expecting Q4 to be a little busy. But what we have learned is that a lot of product came to the market in Q1 and Q2, almost 500 products, but they didn't pencil out. So what we have done, we have tightened our buy box and we're staying close to our buy box as much as we can. Hence, we're not looking at some of those that we took a look at a very wide, very secondary tertiary market. But also why we also do that? Because we are seeing a pattern where large institutions are investing. We're seeing a pattern where prep checks are going and they're asking for, and we're optimizing to that. That's because of two things. Number one, we look at the market at the very micro level. Prep has that micro and a macro view. We tend to think we know inform information, but those big shops, they have large, lots of information. If, if Walker Dunlop and says, hey, I'm investing only in a core plus assets, and if you know, uh, any other large organization, say, uh, large other prep check says, that's the only thing I do, then if we go to a secondary tertiary market, things need to be adjusted that way. And that's how we kind of calibrate. On the right, uh, you can see uh, we have about quite a bit of 10 within the LOI partner review and underwriting. So it's an active uh, market at this point. Up until last week, we have underwritten about 1300 assets. In our database, we have that amount of information. We have 145. So what happens, deal come in from here, that goes there. Then we cut it based on you know, our buy box. Then we put that into the LOI bucket as you go. And on the right side is our stack, Monday, Red IQ, Client Type, Red Skyline title. Uh, so we tend to keep our stack very close and our stacks will go back and forth. They will talk to each other. And that's how we designed it um, as you go. And I'll talk a little bit more about and uh, how Monday Red IQ client ever talk to each other as you go. Example, uh, if you have sent a deal for us and we give you feedback, uh, Red IQ, that's where we store the data. That 1300 goes there. And the text that you had today that comes from Client Harbor, we designed it and that's, that's where it works. And sometime when a deal comes in, we manage on the Monday. And then we have other, a couple of other platforms that is on the back end that we use, I'll talk about it. And uh, so whole idea is that on your LP, where do you get the information from? If you're a GP, where do you send the information from? What the typical expectation? That's what we're gonna talk about. Everybody knows Mike, I love that picture. Uh, he is he's our that person for all things capital. Uh, you may know that uh, from the uh, fund to fund, fund managers and LPs is Mike and his team. And then we are behind him when it comes to the prep and institutional. Uh, Sanjay runs a lot of prep shops. I run a lot of prep and also institutional conversation. Uh, Mike is the, uh, the front focal. And we have Trevor, Jasmine, Maria. Everybody's backing up Mike as you go. All right, so let's get grounded. What does it uh, What does it mean to go full cycle? Which is if I invest in a deal or I raised in a deal, uh, what does it look like? It's typically three to five years. Acquisition is the one segment. You get it, you identify the property, we identify the property, run through the model, negotiate, put it under contract, then we get to the closing. That's first segment. As you as we go to the closing, we put an equity and a debt structure together. Those two sets the stage for the asset management. 
which is the asset manager, we have to, they have to answer to the LPs and GPs and also the lenders. And they have to execute that based on the assumption what's put in on the acquisition. So there's all interdependent, right? So that's, that's what, so if you're LP, if you invest the money in the multifamily, uh, it's typically five years. The market is great. You can come back out early. Uh, I don't think so before five years, I've seen somebody, unless you really want to have it for a long time. But either way, you'll have a refi in between if you choose to stay for five years or longer. So you'll get some of your money back. But either way, there is a finance scenario will happen, either exit or refi. All right, so with that five cycle, what happens? You know, from the equity raising side, the topic is equity raising. So from the equity raiser perspective, if I were to go and raise an equity, what we have done, I'll share a little bit of data point that we have from the uh, team perspective. What we see in the US, typically the investment, if we broad cut it, not perfect, but broadly cut it, is three different buckets. We invest into, on the bottom side, in our relationship, our health, our wealth. Typically, that's what those three. Then from the wealth, it's a financing activities, investing activities, real estate and sales. And, but we are the real estate team. So those are the typical buckets in the real estate. Again, those are not all inclusive. It's just the framework to give you guys. So for us, when we looked at it, we said, okay, we understand what we have to do. We have to create wealth by creating value via the real estate route. And then within the real estate, we're going to go under two verticals, multifamily first, and then retail we went in. But retail we went in leveraging somebody's 42 years experience. Massive didn't go to retail in three years out because that's an acquired skill set. It doesn't happen that often. It's tough to build a team. We can do the construction at the gate. Uh, we have seen it quite a bit. A lot of us will think we can do it, but it is tough. And it is tough, especially when you're running 10, 20, 30, $40 million deals. So that's an acquired skill set. So when we saw the relationship, we built it on. With the multifamily, you have a little bit less barrier to entry uh, because you can kind of put the team together faster, but then the leverage is how big you are so you can you know, throw the weight and negotiate with the brokers and Android, everybody else and operational skill set you know, from that fashion. So investors, if we step back and look at our investor base, we have small business owners, working moms, working dads, and the healthcare professionals. And we have a lot of small business owners as well. And I know a couple of CEOs that we know. And we also have folks who made a switch in the carrier. Maybe you retired, maybe we're about to get into retirement. So those are different blend. And different blended folks will ask for different type of returns. Not everything fits for everybody. So which is also why when we started raising equity, we ask our questions, okay, what is the you know, value that we are adding? That means how, what problem we are solving? Is it the is it the inflation problem or is it the tax problem or is it the cash flow problem? Right? Because we're solving problem from somebody and we're solving it continuously, not just once a year, not just once in a two years, right? So that's our investor base. And uh, we have we have that. So from the GP perspective, build your team around it, have an understanding. So we call it is that each of the CRE segment is unique. It takes time to understand each segment, 12 to 14 months or 12 to 24 months, because within 24 months, you go through cycle twice including tax, insurance, some is uh, this or that, a lot of break broken stuff. So it takes a little bit more. And that is also why if I'm an equity raiser building a team, raising an equity on the multifamily segment, flipping into an industrial, it is, it takes time. It just doesn't happen right away. So we always say, you know, just get grounded first before you take the other one. Number two, it's very interesting. Raising is easier during good time and tough during the bad times because emotional sentiment takes in. But the flip side is, it is the truth. In reality, investing during bad time is better than the worst time during the good time. Because investment, investing during the bad time means during the good time, there was some problem on top of the market and the bad time, the problem was corrected. So you come back in and you do that. And that's why you're seeing all those large shops, all the PE companies, all the back of the company, they are buying. They are making those deals happening because right now what we buy, we have a strong basis to get in. Yes, it feels bad because I'm hearing all the news, but those news are 12 months old. Uh, so we got to get get over that news and invest during the bad time because you are coming in the better footing. So when the good time happens, you're ahead of the curve. Right, so that's that. And then pay attention to what everybody's saying. 
but also understand why everybody is saying whatever they're saying. So it just goes for the LPs and GPs both, right? Uh, LPs have feedbacks, take the feedback in, understand why the, what the feedback that you say, and then kind of go. And then for us, it's that uh, one to two asset classes, win them, then expand. And we strongly believe is that association will get us started. We are hypothetically, and we are in a team together. Yes, that's going to get us started, but the differentiation will keep us going. But we got to be different. Uh, we got to stand out. So if you're raising equity, if you're building a multifamily, if you have a similar strategy, just like 10,000 other people, I buy 150 units to 200 units in a certain location of the town in a certain time of the month and a particular day. And guess what? Winning of winning will be tough. There's no depreciating factor. It's blended in. So I always think about that perspective. Now, I want to flip it back to the LP side, that when we invest money, what does it look like on the equity raising side? I should understand a five years activity. I should have the plan, which is a pro forma that you believe. From there, I should also understand the annual activity. From there, I should see a quarterly activity and a monthly activity. So if I'm an LP investor, the five years activity, that's the pro forma, that's the pack, that's investor deck, check. Annual activity is some of the big ones. And one of the bigger issues is the K1. We struggled quite a bit. We're getting better over time. But I expect you know, the K1s and also paying attention to insurance when I joined the quarterly call and the cost sex and things like that. I expect uh, you know tax protest as well. And then quarterly, whatever the reporting you know, process is, could be a virtual meeting or something like that. And also the monthly activities. I should get the reports, should have some commentary to it. So if I'm an LP, we should be able to expect those. If we are a GP, we should be able to deliver those. Now, reality is when we start, it takes a little bit time to get to that point. We've been here for almost three years now, and we have grown quite a bit. And as we have grown, we, we built the team on the back end all the time, and still first year, year and a half, we didn't get the cadence. Finally, this year, uh, started about last quarter, we're able to implement all 15 assets. So think about this way. Uh, they, and I worked at, uh, during the 20th of the month, our whole finance team is busy pushing out 20 some odd reports to 400 investors. We have quarterly calls. Our finance portfolio manager, he's, and, and the, <laughs> the month he's busy. He's scheduling about 13, 14 calls. And then during the K1 times, we have 300, some odd, almost 400 K1s to push out, checking them. Then insurance renewal, it's a quite a bit of activity that happens. So if you're an LP again, obviously you do multiple deals, have a spreadsheet, have Excel file, put together some things that can go through the process. If you're a general partner or if you're an equity raiser, you still have to do that. So at least have a plan that once you deliver the money into a deal, deal gets closed what happens in the next five years, right? So that's it. We get detail into it during our uh, masterclass. All right, so I'll go into the next one. So, all right. So we'll go reflect, right? So let's see if I have an LP, this is my expectation. GP, this was my delivery that I, that my promise to our, was our promise for LPs. Uh, yeah, sometimes we fall short, but we can ask for forgiveness. Uh, then the, what happens? The equity operations, right? For us, let's reflect the downturn of it. So we are in 15 deals. It's a down cycle. We have 35 some odd partners. What we saw that the, the, the best thing, what we can do, do whatever time it is, to stay engaged and be visible to all the LPs and GPs. That's a matter, right? Good, better, ugly, just stay visible. And those are some of the things that we have done so far. We stay visible. I, I, I'm proud to say our team is the only team that we know who has continuously case showed up on a Wednesday for the last two and a half years straight to show our case study. There's not, not at the continuous basis. We show up to the events. We take phone calls when times are tough. We, we provide feedbacks. Sometimes it's slow, but we try our best to get to you. Yes, we have our misses. I'm not, I'm not going to deny it, but we do that. So if you're a GP, stay in front of uh, the LPs. Stay visible in front of LPs. We have seen a typical sign of a team who's not strong enough. They get defensive right away when times are bad. They get cold, and that's a really sign that you need to watch out. So if you're an LP, if your JP is in communicating, 
and they are you can find them and that's a indication of something coming up in the front end of it so our request is stay engaged stay visible from the gp side at the to, to the gp community uh, because it's our fiduciary duty to get in front of the lps and engage with them same thing with an lp stay close be active uh, and just read the documents ask the questions and allow a little bit of time to get back with you but stay engaged right okay? And some of our learnings that we had from the LPs, right? that thing that throughout, stay engaged throughout the whole process, always be proactive wherever possible. And what we have seen, the operations is saving us everywhere. Uh, our tagline is everybody knows how to read PNL, but not everybody knows how to read PNL to drive action. Just because I can calculate revenue minus cost is my cash flow minus my financing activities, my NOI, it does not mean it can drive an action. We have seen that time and a time over. Majority of the time that we came in and had to do a takeover or had to help that out, that is the case. That I'm reading a PL, but I don't know what's happening. I cannot take my PL and forecast 45 days out, 60 days out, 90 days out, and identify the type of problem we're going to get so we can navigate through it, right? Um, for GPs, for equity raisers, know who you're loyal to. You're loyal to LPs. So protect them as, as any cost you can. So be visible, stay, just keep on saying that, right? Oftentimes we have seen it and oh look, life is tough, right? Uh, market did what market did. Doesn't matter how good of a choice we made, market came and whacked us, right? Some of us, we are paying the price moving forward. But if I cannot say that, and I'll say openly, our loyalty lies to LPs, we raised over $50 million and everything goes for them. And I'm, we are willing to have tough talks with the other partners, which we do, to make sure our LPs are there. So, and also make the statement you are, right? LP's gotta know, GP's gotta know. So you make sure that you always have your fiduciary duty and responsibility towards the money side, which is your LP's, then you kind of go. All right, so this is uh, then, you know, we talked a little bit about that, but let me show you on the back end how it works for us, for all the reporting. I get a lot of questions about, hey, how do you produce 20 reports? How do you manage all the 15 assets? It's a lot, all that kind of good stuff, right? So this is our top secret stuff. So this is, again, we didn't get here right away. We got here after two years of trial and error, getting the people together and everything else. So on the left-hand side, we have all the data sources, Intrada, Resman, RealPage, Excel, Miscellaneous, whatever you call it. We push them into a data lake for us. So in this case, we're using Power BI. Now we are getting into uh, the Azure Microsoft database where we have our own data where everything gets linked. And then it becomes a data set for us. Then we report out to the Power BI. Then it becomes a dashboard. We review that. And then we communicate everything via the cash flow portal to the investors. So all of our investors get an email from cash flow portal. So if one of our investors says, hey, I didn't get your email. First thing we say, have you logged into the cash flow portal? And if they say yes, then we'll say, oops, that's our issue. Let's go take a look at it. If it's not, I will say, okay, let's go uh, including the cash flow portal as you go. So for us, that's the way it works. And our software, the Power BI dashboard that we have, we can literally go from Entrada to Resident to RealPage to Yardi. It doesn't really matter. This master mapping maps everything, forces everything. So we get to see all the assets the same way. That's our way of running the assets. So whenever we KP, uh, we don't just sign the loan and go to sleep and wake up in five years. We are watching. Uh, we watch beyond the data. So we refresh the data every seven days, every Monday. Uh, and also we prep with that data as we come in to the property management company because our position has been that we are the asset managers. So we are leading the property management you know, uh, the team. So we should be ahead with them, if not at par with them. We should, we should not be at a spot where they're telling us what's going on in our property that we didn't know. And that also happened 30 days ago, right? Or 30 days prior to the call. Uh, so that's how we kind of manage uh, our thing. So... If you are growing uh, as a GP, if you think you want to have a you know, 200, 300, 400 million dollars worth of asset under management, there's all that's going to come out the family. Uh, you don't want to die by running, as, uh, running spreadsheets. Uh, you would like to have a version of it where all things bakes into your data lake so you can report out. So when you come in, things are ready for you to review and also have the KPIs and all this other stuff. And you want to margin all of the investors there. 
we had a couple of other different portals, but we took a position for process uh, streamlining. We went to one place, uh, Kafka portal. What it also does, if you start simplifying and adding more to it, you can also get a pre-negotiated price. That saves money to the project, which in return uh, makes the project better as you can have oh, That's the part we have for that end now. So that's all I had today. Um, it was quite a bit. I, I we, we Typically, we go about 10 minutes more. Uh, but this is LP and GP, both side of it. It's a capital raising. Um, so I kind of left uh, 20 minutes uh, for any kind of a QA. and a So before I stop, my whole idea was, or the whole point was, if you're on the GP, stay engaged, report out, uh, hold sessions, don't show up if you're just because you want to do it, right? Give them a proactive news as you go. And from our experience perspective, uh, we have a couple of our assets we make to the turns and we got to the distant spot. Uh, so we have a line of sight now. We had a lot of grace from our investors that because we are corrupted. Something happened this, uh, let's say three months ago, we've been talking about it since last year. So they had all the things laid out, all the process checked out, and you've been a better side. If you're an LP, uh, you expect your GPs to communicate with you all the time as well. And you also want them to see, or you want them to be out there uh, visible, doing reports, doing webinars, doing something, reaching out to you, talking to you, giving you an update, right? That way it's balanced because all of us, we understand what market happened, right? It's market, just like stocks and any every investment has risks. And when a stock goes down, we feel bad, but we keep on doubling down to come back out. Multifamily, just like that. You buy a property, it went out fine, great. Take the money, double down. And also when it all south, you lost a little, that's fine. Buy more so you average out and you're going to come back out. So that's that's the whole idea. And when you raise money, it's a it's a process for five years. It's just not one and done. So it's fun process, very meaningful, but have a system and a process so you can stand out and support everybody that you are raising the money from. Uh, the very right there. That's all I have. I'll stop. Thanks.